Hello, friends. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I'm your host, Heidi Ganahl, a wife, mom of four, CU Regent, and the founder of Camp Bow Wow and The She Factor. With a passion for keeping the spirit of our state alive and well, I started this podcast to bring the people of Colorado together to celebrate the amazing state we call home. Come along on this journey with me as I travel across our old country roads in my vintage RV, interviewing folks that embody the true spirit of the Rocky Mountains. From the Front Range to the Mile High City to the Wild West of Southern Colorado, we'll celebrate the history, beauty, and Coloradans that make this place the colorful state it is. Each week, you'll meet people trailblazing the way for an even more colorful future for us all, making a huge difference along the way. Are you ready for a Rocky Mountain ride? Let's do this, Colorado. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I am so excited for you to meet my guests today. Dr. Robert Bucknam and Gail, um, you have been such a big part of our family for so many years. Um, Dr. Bob was my ped- or our pediatrician for our four kids, Tori included. And Gail, um, we've taken parenting classes with you guys a couple times over the years. And um, I just can't say enough about the impact you've had on our family and so many families in the Louisville and Broomfield area, that whole upper northern quadrant, but also all the parents across the country and the world that have read Baby Wise and the whole series that you wrote um, have been impacted as well. Many, many parents sleep a good night um, because of both of you. (laughs) So welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. I'd like to start by having you tell me about how you got into this, whether it's becoming a pediatrician or a counselor or just doing these amazing parenting classes that you do as well. Well, I'll I'll start that because, um, honestly, the reason we got into parenting is because we didn't have those sleepless. We we had sleepless nights. (laughs) And Bob wasn't home a lot that year. He was actually an OBGYN resident at that time before he went to pediatrics. And I just knew that by the time my child reached a year old, that something was wrong. Not only was I not sleeping, but he was really commanding the day. I mean, my day was kind of, I woke up and I did not know what the day would be like. And so I, we moved back to LA, Bob went into uh, pediatrics. We moved back to Los Angeles where I'd had some friends that had done a a parenting class called Growing Kids God's Way with Gary and Mariezzo. And their kids were well behaved. They were getting into the car seat. They were listening. I'm, you know, struggling with my my one, one and a half year old pregnant with our second thinking I can't do two. I can't even do one. How come I can do two? And at that time, I recognized that my girlfriends that had done this class, they were, they had real happy homes. I mean, their days were very peaceful, very, and I'm like, okay, okay, I got to hear what happened. So we got involved at that time with growing, uh, growing kids God's way at that time, like a parenting class for two to to 18 or two to 12 year olds. And (laughs) so I said, Bob, they've got a newborn type of routine thing though and it was just a stamp staple sheet and then they had a class called prep for parenting well fast forward we meet gary and Anne marie um we had such a successful uh time of bringing our second one into the world and just our family changed so much and so that's kind of where my part of the story comes in but i it's really because somebody else reached out and we were able to do some classes um, that that led to, I guess, where Bob's going to talk next. Well, we took the first class, and we loved it. We took the second class. We learned more. And, and as I went into pediatrics, I learned really quickly that, that this was stuff that not only was going to really benefit our family and our own kids, um, our own marriage, really. It helped really build our marriage. But this could be really um, impactful for our patients. And so um, I began to really implement these principles that we were learning through these parenting classes through... Uh, the practice. And one of the great things about being a pediatrician is you get to see kids, you know, over the years, and you get to see how they develop. And um, one of the things I've, I've been able to see is that how different parenting styles give you different results. Mm-hmm. And so we've just really, um, my, not only have, has our family benefited from good, solid parenting, you know, principles, but my practice has really benefited as well. Well, I want you to talk a little bit about your children. You have four amazing children that have done great things or doing great things. Um, tell us a little bit about your family. We have four sons. Now, if I brag, you just stop me, okay? <laughs> no, you go for it. You deserve it. <laughs> four four sons. Uh, our oldest is, uh, what's he now, 32, 33? No? <laughs> yeah, th- he's 30, 33. We have a 31-year-old, a 29-year-old, a 24-year-old. Um, our first and third went to West Point, 
uh, became uh, Army officers uh, through West Point. Our second and fourth sons um, went through uh, Baylor University, went through the ROTC, became officers in that way. Um, we've got seven. Uh, we're, we're expecting our seventh grandchild. Oh, nice. So we've got that. Um, one granddaughter. One granddaughter. All grandsons. Yeah. That you're kidding. One yeah. I bet she is very spoiled. Oh, <laughs> she, Gail bought everything pink she could find. It was, it was awesome. But I love my grandsons. Yeah. I, I just love, I loved raising boys and I love my grandsons. But yeah. it is fun having a girl. I was the first girl after four boys on my dad's side. So, yeah, I got a taste of that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to lie. The boys, the boys have done really well. And they're following the Lord. They're, they've, uh, the oldest three have got wives and kids, and um, they're following the same parenting principles that we did, which we're really thankful for. And, uh, yeah, they've done well. So you have um, run a pediatric office in Boulder County for how many years now? 30 years now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's crazy. Lots of second generation. You look much younger than that. Oh yeah. And for those of you listening, they both look very young for having (laughs) thirty years of pediatric practice and raising four boys and having seven grandkids. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, working with those kids keeps you keeps you feeling pretty young. That's for sure. How have things changed for families and kids over the thirty years? Is there anything significant that stands out? You know, they there really has been a big change in pediatrics, and um, even before the pandemic came, you know, we were seeing changes in pediatrics. Um, 30 years ago, it was relatively uncommon for us to see kids with anxiety and depression. Um, those were things we dealt with just occasionally, you know, in our pediatric practice. And um, prior to the pandemic, we, we were dealing with it quite a bit more, you know, probably on a weekly basis. We were dealing with kids with anxiety and depression and the occasional, you know, child with suicidal ideation, that sort of thing. The biggest thing that's this really impacted our practice in the last few years has been the pandemic. And it's not that we're seeing a lot of kids with COVID. COVID's not been a huge problem for us um, just because it's just not a pediatric illness. But what we're seeing is a lot of um, emotional, um, psychological issues, anxiety, depression, uh, suicide. These are things we're dealing with on a daily basis in our office. And we talked a little bit about this before we started the podcast. It's not necessarily COVID or the isolation that's causing the anxiety and depression. Can you talk about what you think is doing a lot of that damage? Right. Well, we know that there's been, um, since part of why I really got interested in counseling was watching our, our sons in high school and some of what they were learning. And and the, and just my heart just for, for so much change in the, in the families and values. But what happened is after the smartphone came out, there has been a huge increase in teen suicides. And of course, a lot of people think about it as in terms of, you know, what they're seeing. But really, there's more. And COVID kind of just, I would say, it just kind of blew it open, I think, both for parents and for counselors. And we began to say, hey, there's more going on here than just you know, kids are, you know, being bullied online or there's, you know, there's comparisons or, or whatever issues it was. We began to realize there's a change in the brain. Something is happening. And, and they are preferring to have, you know, social, they have social awkwardness and they have all kinds of isolation concerns mm-hmm. and issues. And um, even within the home, we have seen um, kids go from desiring to be with their family to just not wanting to have anything to do with them. They would prefer to just be in the home. And the parents feel like, well, at least they're home. And they don't realize they're actually not home. They are online and they are with others that you don't know and that you can't control. And it's just changed them. So what we've seen is, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of different factors playing a role right now with, with kids. And, and the pandemic has caused more isolation, like you said. And um, they've been out of their routine, not going to school. And masking and the, all those social implications of all that. But the biggest thing that Gail and I have seen, both in her counseling practice and my pediatric practice, is that kids are spending so much time online. All of a sudden, when the pandemic came, all the school was online, all the social activities were online, mm-hmm. um, everything was online. And these kids who were previously spending maybe, you know, seven hours a day online are now spending 10, 12 hours a day with their cell phones and that sort of thing. And It was about 2016, 2017 that physicians really began to understand that there's a mechanism between um, the the screen time, excessive screen time, and the changes of the brain. You know, why is it that the kids get um, agitated and angry and irritable and 
and sleep poorly when they're on online a lot, you know. And then there's long-term implications we've seen. There's an increase of mental um, illness, mm-hmm. increased anxiety, increased depression. And what we've really discovered um, through really good sound research is that excessive screen time changes the way the brain develops. It changes the way the brain functions in terms of the hormones involved in the brain, and it changes the way the brain develops. And the coronavirus um you know, more than anything, put everyone online and we're seeing the impact in our office with anxiety and depression. I mean, honestly, we can't find enough uh, mental health professionals to take care of the need for just our patients. Yeah, I noticed that, uh, well, this was a big thing to notice. Children's Hospital declared the first mental health emergency ever in the state of Colorado for kids. Um, so is it as simple as just getting our kids offline as much? Is it, is, does that make an impact if we cut our screen time in half for the kids? That's a big part of it. I think that parents need to be educated as to, you know, what, how does screen time impact the brain? And um, we've actually got, with our resources, we've got an article we've written called Unplugged, which addresses a lot of these issues. And there's a lot of good resources within that article. And we'll give you links at the end how to, how to get to that. So part of it is definitely reducing screen time, you know. Um, what I tell parents is you've got to be able to re- replace the screen time with, with other activities, getting outdoors, get, getting in the sunshine, you know, um, getting some exercise, getting some face-to-face interaction with people, that sort of thing. Um, but a, a big part of what Gail and I see is that um, it's not just the kids that are hooked on screen time, it's the parents. Huh. And so we have a lot of kids that are home with their parents right now, you know, with the whole COVID thing, but the parents are, are not present. They're not plugged in with the kids because they're constantly on the screens themselves. That's a really good point, especially with all of us working from home and trying to navigate the school online at home and and um, working at home is good in a lot of ways for people and parents especially, but my goodness, it's hard to juggle everything. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Bob, as I like to call you over the years, um, you really inspired uh, my TED talk that I did called The Art of the Comeback because I remember going in, having Tori there, and I was like, gosh, the kids in high school are just such a mess right now. They're so upset and angry and just lost. What can we do? And Tori's 26 now, so this was probably 10 years ago. And you said, you know, the best thing I found is to turn them outward, get them focused on the world that's outside, the bigger world, and giving yeah. back yeah. and contributing to society and being seeing that you're a bigger part of society. Um, that really changed things for me, and it gave me a chance to look back at my life and figure out that's how I got through a lot of the challenges that I got yeah, through. Absolutely. You know, our society teaches us a lie. And the lie that our society teaches us is that the more you get, the better off you are. You know, that the more you get, the happier you are, the more joy you have, the more peace you have, that sort of thing. And that's, that's not correct. You know, um, being joyful, having peace um, is all about what you give, not what you get. You know, and one of the things that I, one of the pieces of advice I use a lot for, for, you know, young people that are struggling with anxiety and depression or, you know, the middle school kid who's being talked about and being left out, that sort of thing. Um, I always encourage them to look outside themselves. You know, to, when you feel like you're being talked about, being left out of the group, um, the thing to do is to, to reach out to other kids in your environment um, who are also being left out, you know. That's and, beautiful. And bless them, you know. Just go say a kind word. Be, be friendly, you know. And so often, as soon as they get their, their mind off of themselves, um, they really begin to feel a lot better about themselves, you know. Self-esteem doesn't come from what you get. It's, it's what you give to other people. That's beautiful. Beautifully said. And, and that's one of the biggest lessons I took from the parenting classes that Jason and I did with you um, after Holly was born. And part of the joy of those parenting classes was the community that we built with the other parents that were going through it and the friendships and the connections and just being able to share stories, right? And that's what we're trying to do with the podcast, actually, is like share the stories of the people of Colorado so that especially so new people moving here can kind of get a feel for who we are, how we roll here in Colorado. So when people ask you from out of state, like, why do you live here? Why do you love Colorado? What do you say? I, you know, growing up here, I was not born here, but growing up here most of my life, I would honestly say it's the ruggedness. It's the ruggedness of the mountains. We spend a lot of time on the Western Slope down in the Ure area, and we love that ruggedness of looking at the mountains and hiking and being, I just see it very as very much of a, of an independent sort of, 
um, type of being able to get out and do and be. And from a very young age, we were able to enjoy the mountains. So I always think about it like that. Gail and I both grew up in Boulder. Um, we were high school sweethearts. She went to Boulder oh. High School. I went to Fairview High School. Uh-oh. Competing high rivalry. schools. <laughs> and then she went to CSU and I went to CU. No way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but you know, when we were dating, we'd go sit up on Flagstaff Mountain and, and we'd bring picnics and we just love that mountains. And, and we do, we have a home in Uray, uh, down in the San Juans, and we spend a lot of time down there. And, uh, you know, we grew up skiing, and now we do a lot of cross-country skiing because we're too old to sit down here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's we're dangerous for us old well, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get back into it. But, you know, we even went to Switzerland and came back and said, it's not Uray. You know, it's not Colorado. Our state has so much here. Yeah. And, so it's and the people are yeah. so wonderful here, you know. Yeah. Um, is that rugged individualism? Yeah, it really is. I, that, I love that. And I think that, um, you know, in Colorado, it's you do you, I'll do me. Let's just let us do our thing, live our lives. And uh, it's really kind of what the American experiment's all about, which I know, you know, your four sons also uh, obviously have a, a love of our country because they're in the military yeah, they, and defending us. Mm -hmm. But um, how does that play in your practice and your lives, your love of America and the, the opportunity here, kind of the grand experiment? Well, you know... Um I think, you know, Gail and I, we grew up in, a, in homes who were very patriotic. Mm -hmm. And as our kids were growing, you know, after dinner, we would spend time reading the Bible to our kids. We'd read a lot of patriotic things. We talked a lot about the founders, you know. And we really yeah. wanted to instill within our kids um, that just the specialness of what we have in America. You know, we have such a unique um, opportunity in this country. And... Uh, it's something I try to pass on and kind of encourage my patients to understand and so forth, you know. When they're going through those, you know, middle school and high school years, this is the time for them to really take advantage of the opportunities that America has to offer. They've got great schools. They've got great opportunities. And, uh, you know, I, I encourage them to just dream big. And I really encourage, kind of getting back to that other orientedness, I encourage them to really reach out the side of themselves and really try to bless others and choose a direction in life and a career that would really... Um, bless other people. That's wonderful. I think, too, the responsibility part of it, honestly. Um, you know, I think in America, we, we are given a lot, but we haven't really, we're really losing uh, the, the part of training our children in the responsibility. <clears throat> yeah. And That's the good. responsibility that, yes, you have all this opportunity, but you are responsible to go out and you are responsible to, you know, to pursue that and, and to be responsible for your actions. And I think we've lost so much of that. And that was such a great part of our country yeah. um, was people were responsible for their freedom. Well, it's part of that rugged individualism, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of my family, my community, right, my your church. Community, yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's about that. And it's about understanding that, what, that you are responsible for your actions and you are responsible for caring for others as well. So. That's right. I appreciate that. Um, so to wrap up, which I could talk to you guys all day. Maybe we'll have to have you back on the podcast. We'll have a series. Um, what's the most Colorado thing you've ever done? You I know? mean, living in Uray is pretty cool. Living that's that's pretty Uray. Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, it depends if, um, I'm trying to think the most Colorado thing I've ever done. It, it's, it's kind of funny because when you travel around and you're from Boulder, everybody kind of has a certain image of you and like the complete <laughs> opposite of that. Yeah. But like yeah. the most Colorado thing I've ever done, well, probably more with the mountains, the skiing. Um, um, but I don't know. I think, I think for me, and I bet you're probably pretty similar, it's just enjoying you know, sitting up there in Uray and, and on the yeah. front porch and just looking up at those mountains. And, uh, you know, we always have deer in our yard and wild turkeys yeah. in our yard. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then we step out the back door and go hiking. And, and uh, we just really enjoy just being in the in yeah. nature. In God's creation. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, it's so interesting, Heidi, because I know you're a region at Colorado. And my dad and his dad went to see you and his mom. They oh all graduated gosh. there. And there was always this place in Colorado. Well, well, my dad would drive home from work every day right up there on McCaslin in South Boulder Road. And he'd call it a Shangri-La. It was a Shangri-La. And that's his Colorado. That was Colorado to him. was pulling over and looking at a Shangri-La. Well, a lot went up for sale. And it was just kind of a hand-painted sign. And it didn't cost a whole lot. And that's where we built our house. And so in, in Boulder, our house is built on my dad's Shangri-La. And it's the place that he used to always stop. And it looks out over the beautiful uh, Colorado, flat the, the, the flat irons, but yep. CU. He loved CU. Oh, 
the University of Colorado, and he could see his university out there. And so I guess to us a lot, and we're in Boulder, the part that's Colorado is really that university. Mm-hmm. And, and, and what that, you know, and just kind of looking out and seeing that and remembering dad, and you know, that was his Shangri-La, so. That's a really neat story. And I mean, it. I think um, that view coming off of McCaslin yeah. is just priceless. It's breathtaking, yeah. it, it is. is. It definitely is. You raise a different type of beauty than San Juan's are, but you can't beat the, the front range either. No, and sitting in Folsom Field watching Ralphie <laughs> run. Oh, I mean, the it's best the best. Thing? Yeah. That is a very Colorado thing. That's a very Colorado thing, to, very do. Colorado thing yeah. to do. Well, thank you so okay. much for spending some time with us. Um, Gail, Dr. Bob, where can people learn more about your parenting classes and your practice, obviously? Yeah. So I'm actually a pediatrician at Cornerstone Pediatrics. We've got offices in Louisville and in Broomfield. Um, we, um, our parenting class is called Cornerstones of Parenting. And you can access it through our website, Cornerstones of Parenting, all one word, cornerstonesofparenting.com. And um, we're actually going to be changing things up a little bit because of the COVID and the whole thing. And we're going to be um, offering um, our classes online coming late this fall. So that, that we're website... We're kind of building the website, I guess yeah, you could we, say. We're kind of rebuilding it, kind of yeah. taking it down and kind of rebuilding it. Mm-hmm. So if you go to cornerstonesofpediatrics.com, or I'm sorry, cornerstonesofparenting.com, um, you can follow our progress with our class on that. And I can't say enough about the parenting classes. They were fantastic. And I mean, obviously, I already had Tori. She was a teenager when I took the classes. So I was like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then the twins came along. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, parenting is new, a hard deal. Newborn parenting is, is, is a challenge. Well, and of course, baby wise is still available. My goodness. Yes, like, yes. you are the guru. You guys are the gurus of getting babies to sleep. Well, Aunt Gary and Anne Marie were the first. And then we came alongside them. And, right. and they're the ones that really had taught us so much and then Bob was the one who said let's get this into the pediatric practices and so we are forever indebted to their mentorship for sure for sure well thanks to them and thanks to all of you for giving us some sleep over the years and for helping us raise some great kids and a great community and we're so blessed to have you in the community in Colorado and um yeah thank you again thank you you thanks Heidi Thank you for joining us today on Heidi's Colorful Colorado. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And definitely follow me on Instagram to keep up with my latest adventures. In the meantime, happy trails from me, Heidi Ganahl.